What's up guys, Chris Rivera here, founder of The E-Commerce Accountants. Welcome to part two of the tax planning for foreign e-commerce entrepreneurs. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. If you are accidentally on this video, go back to our YouTube channel and select part one. It's immensely important that you fully understand all of the topics that we're covering here because this information builds on itself. So make sure you watch video one in its entirety. It's not that long. Take the time to do the learning so that this video makes more sense for you. So here in part two, we are going to cover e-commerce entrepreneurs that do not have ECI, that do not have effectively connected income. Again, to recap on what that means, that means you do not have inventory in the US. You do not live in the US for 31 days or more. Basically, you're in the US for 31 days or less. And also, you are not a US citizen. If all of those items fit your fact pattern, you do not have effectively connected income. And generally speaking, you do not have substantial US tax risk. We're going to jump into my laptop here in a minute to discuss two tax planning structures that could make sense for you. But before we get started, again, just a reminder, smash that like button, subscribe. It helps us tremendously as it's an indicator that we are providing valuable content to the e-commerce entrepreneur community. But without further ado, let's jump into my laptop and dive into the details for what tax structures could make sense for you as as a foreign e-commerce entrepreneur. Okay, welcome into my laptop here. We are going to cover the second tax structure in this series. As you can tell, this structure is a lot simpler than the last one we covered, and it's all for good reason. Again, if you do not have ECI, the structure is a lot simpler. If you just set up a US LLC here that handles all of the operations, meaning it owns the brand, it owns, let's say it's a drop shipping business, it pays out the supplier, it pays for the ads, it has its own bank accounts or credit cards. None of that is considered effectively connected income, at least based on how we treat our clients in this fact pattern. So basically you have customers that purchase products from this US LLC, and products get shipped out, ideally through drop shipping model, maybe from China, or even US-based suppliers. Basically, nothing in that fact pattern would be considered effectively connected income. And therefore, even though you have a US LLC with US bank accounts and US Shopify account, US bank account, everything, you do not have income taxes in the US. And you're actually able to transfer cash back to your foreign country, whether that's you as an individual, or maybe a foreign country owns this US LLC. As long as you're reporting how much money leaves the country and comes into the country, you do not have to pay US income taxes. We call this a foreign-owned DRE, or foreign-owned disregarded entity. And that's exactly what this is. This is a US LLC that has pass-through status, which makes it transparent here, which means it does not get passed. A few takeaways that you have to understand from this simplified structure is that you must file a tax return annually. Form 5472. That's basically the form that tells the IRS how much money came into the company from the owners, how much money was basically contributed in or loaned in or whatever the relationship is from related parties and how much money left the company to go to the owners, basically distributions, dividends, that sort of deal. As long as you're reporting money that's going in and out, the IRS doesn't even care how much income you have. You just have to report that money's coming in and out of the country through a US LLC, essentially. And then the second takeaway is that this entity will need its own bank account and its own credit cards. Similar to what we were talking about with the old structure, this company will need its own bank accounts and credit cards. So it's definitely important to keep this structure separate from anything else above it, whether a foreign business entity owns it or an individual like this screenshot owns this US LLC. Okay, on to strategy number three, C Corp, Locker Corp. This should look immensely familiar. Why? Because this is the exact same tax planning structure that we did in video one. Basically, the idea here is if you do not have effectively connected income, you could force effectively connected income essentially by creating C Corporation here. I mean, there's a couple of different ways that you could force effectively connected income if you really think about it. If this company owns inventory, 
that's something that would generate effectively connected income. But also, if you just simply create a U.S. corporation, not an LLC, an LLC tax as a corporation or a U.S. corporation itself, that would force effectively connected income. And basically, this makes sense for those of you who do not have effectively connected income overseas, but maybe you live in a country that has a very high tax rate. Let's say your effective tax rate is like 45%. Or back in my EY days, I've seen countries that have had tax rates as high as 78%, which is crazy. If you make $100, $78, and that goes to taxes, that does exist in certain places in the world for certain types of businesses. If you are in a country that has a high tax rate, you can force effectively connected income and basically benefit from this 21% tax rate here in the US. So basically the situation is exactly the same as video one. You have an entrepreneur, in this case located in Ireland, they own 100% of an Irish entity, 100% of a US corporation. This company is the management company. This company is the operating company. This company has its own bank accounts, credit cards, etc. It owns the Shopify or Amazon brand. It owns the inventory if there is any inventory. It owns the ad accounts, everything. This is truly the e-commerce operating company. And then this is a management company that basically gets compensated for services. So basically the only difference between this and the first example we went over is if it's more strategic for you to have a less advantageous management agreement, you could do so. Meaning if instead of 50% of profits, like we did in the example in video one, maybe 10% of profits is the management fee. So if we go through the numbers here, back in an earlier slide, instead of 50% of the profits being a management fee, and that's what's reported, it's maybe only 10% or $24,000 is deducted in the US and that would increase your profit in the US and decrease your profit in that foreign country. Again, this makes the most sense for foreign jurisdictions that have a high tax rate, higher than the US, basically. This is basically forcing ECI for foreign entrepreneurs. The key takeaways here, again, transfer pricing contract is a must. This contract needs to be documented. The documentation should be done by a transfer pricing specialist. And also there should be documentation, meaning a contract that is followed and whatever the terms of that contract are, are followed between these two entities. Meaning if there's a contract that says this company has to pay this company 10% of profits, you should be calculating profits, multiplying by 10% and paying this entity pursuant to the terms of that contract. Also, you will need to file a U.S. tax return, obviously, for this entity, because it is a U.S. corporation subject to U.S. income taxes. And lastly, the U.S. entity will need its own bank account credit cards. This is the same for any of these structures. This entity will need its own bank accounts and credit cards, just like this entity will need its own bank accounts and credit cards. Just like you as an individual will need your own bank accounts or credit card. You and your friends, for example, don't have the same bank accounts or credit cards. Think of these as three separate people. They need to have three separate sets of finances here. Okay, so that concludes our two-part series for tax planning for foreign e-commerce entrepreneurs. Thank you so much for sitting through both of our videos. Again, if you find our content valuable, smash that like button, subscribe. We are truly grateful for you sitting through our content and we hope to see you on the next one. Take care guys.